Welcome back. So now we're going to take a diversion into the Laplace transform domain and transfer functions because this is going to help us to assess things like performance and robustness of our closed loop controlled systems. Okay? So we're going to tie this back in with what we've learned from optimal control with regulators and common filters later. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is move away from the state space or ordinary differential equation formulation, and we're going to move towards transfer functions. So in general, I guess the way I like to think about a system that I want to control, so maybe this is my inverted pendulum on a cart, or maybe this is a car that I'm trying to uh, drive or an airplane or something like that, is abstractly it's a system that takes inputs and gives some measurement outputs y. And I might or might not <clears throat> know what's going on under the hood here. I might or might not know what the full state x is or what the dynamics are. Um, so for example, if I don't know what happens between u and y, I might have to build a model from data. That's something we'll talk about later is system identification. Um, but in general, we think of this map from u to y as just some function that moves from u to y. And we call this a transfer function. And sometimes we're going to call this transfer function g. Sometimes we'll call it p. Uh, there's a few um, different notations out there. But we're going to say that this is a transfer function. Transfer function uh, g. And so this transfer function, there are essentially, for linear systems at least, there are these three equivalent representations. So I want to write this down. This is really important. So there are three equivalent representations for linear systems. And this is really important that we're talking about linear systems. Okay, and these three representations are as follows. <clears throat> so on the one hand, we have our state space. Okay, and maybe I'll keep it uh, interesting with some more colors. So we have state space, that's this one. This is essentially our ODE, x dot equals ax plus bu y equals cx. Okay. In addition to state space, we have our frequency domain or our transfer function. So I'm going to draw that over here. I'm going to say we have our uh, frequency domain. Okay. And this would be our transfer function g, so g of s. And I'm going to write down what it is, but I'll derive it for you later. So this is uh, s is a Laplace transform variable, and g of s is, if this is my system, it would be c times this Laplace transform variable si minus a inverse times b. Okay, so this is the expression in the frequency domain. This is my uh, transfer function. And there's one other equivalent representation, which is essentially in the time domain. OK, I'm going to write it up here, maybe in blue. We have the time domain representation uh, in terms of what's known as the impulse response. OK, and what I'm going to show you is that these are all equivalent, and then I'm going to explain what each of them does. So we're really familiar with this one, but I'll tell you what these two mean. So the impulse response basically says that the output of my system y of t is equal to um, <clears throat> the convolution integral. So it's a little complicated. It's a little convoluted. The convolution integral uh, from 0 to t of, uh, what do I want to call this? I'm going to call this h of t minus tau u of tau d tau. And we've actually already seen this convolution integral before when we were looking at um, this state space system and writing x of t uh, in terms of the convolution of e to the a t with b u. Okay, so here h is an impulse response function. So if I take my system and I give it an impulse in the control, so you can imagine Let's say I have a spring mass system, and I take this thing and I whack it with a hammer. And so that spring mass system starts ringing and eventually dies out. 
h of t is a function of y of t at, directly after that impulse, directly after I hit it with a hammer. That's the response of the system. And so if I want to know what the system does to some arbitrary input u of t, some, some time varying forcing, all I have to do is convolve it, take this convolution integral with that impulse response. So h of t is the impulse response. Um, okay, so I've told you that you have this time domain representation that's convolution with the impulse response tells me what my output is to any arbitrary input u. That's completely equivalent uh, to the state space representation. I um, am now going to tell you what this transfer function representation is. So that's also, these are all equivalent. These are all equivalent for a linear system. And remember, the basic idea of a linear system is that if I have two inputs, if I have u1 and u2, so let's say u1 gives rise to y1, and let's say u2 gives rise to y2, then what this means is that if I add u1 and u2, the output is just y1 plus y2. And that's true for all inputs, basically. So this is kind of a very rough encapsulation of what it means to be linear. It just means that if I double the input, it doubles the output. If I cut the input in half, the output gets cut in half. If I add one input with another input, the two outputs add. Okay, that's all it means to be linear. Um, and for linear systems, I can choose any of these equivalent mathematical representations for my system, for this input-output system u to y. Okay, I can choose state space. I can choose the impulse response uh, framework where I whack the system and collect data, and then I convolve that with u. Or I can select this transfer function. So this is what I want to talk about for the rest uh, of this video, is essentially what is this transfer function and what does it mean? Okay. So the idea of the transfer function is really cool. What it tells you essentially is if I put as an input to my system, let's say a sine wave of a certain frequency, for linear systems, after transients die out, I should get an output which is also a sine wave of that exact same frequency, but it might have a bigger magnitude or a smaller magnitude, and it might be phase shifted. So let's draw a picture. Okay, so if, um, so let's say I have sine omega t, sine omega t in, then what we're going to have out is also a sine omega t, but it might, it's hard for me to draw the same omega twice, um, but it's going to have maybe a different amplitude, so I'm going to try to draw it bigger, and it might have a different phase. There might be some phase and some amplitude. Okay, so this might end up being a sine omega t plus phi. Okay, so that's true for all frequency sine waves into a linear system. If I take a linear system and I force it with a sine, a pure tone sine wave at any frequency omega, the output measurement of that linear system will be a sine wave and it'll have the same frequency omega and it'll have uh, possibly a different magnitude and possibly some phase lead or lag. But it will be basically the same frequency sine wave. And so the transfer function is a complex function. So this is a complex function where if I plug in g of i omega, okay, and remember e to the i omega is like sine omega t, or cos omega t plus i sine omega t, so you can kind of imagine that if I plug in i omega, it's like forcing this thing with a sine wave. If I look at the magnitude of this complex number, that is a, the magnitude of the output if I force this thing with sine omega t. And if I look at the phase angle of this complex number, so phase angle of g i omega, that's equal to the phase of my output sine wave. And we're going to look at this in a lot more detail. We're going to look at it on examples and make things called frequency response curves and Bode plots. So we'll go a lot more into depth. But the, the idea is that if I Laplace transform, if I Laplace transform these equations, then I get this transfer function representation in terms of a Laplace variable s that tells me essentially if I input different frequencies of signs into my system, 
how does the output sign look? Is it bigger? Is it smaller? Is it phase shifted? Does it lead? Does it lag? Those are all things that we get out of this transfer function formulation. And so a few things that we're going to do is we're going to actually derive this Laplace transformed expression by, by taking the Laplace transform of the state space system. And we're also going to look at what it means uh, to plug in I omega into this transfer function and why I get out A and phi. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about all of this later and we'll also build it on an example like the spring mass system. Okay, so this is coming up. But the big picture is there are these three equivalent representations for linear systems. And sometimes some of them are better than others. So for example, if I have physics, I might want to write down an ODE, and I might want to use this to solve an LQR or a Kalman filter system like we did in optimal control. If I have data from an experiment, so in the olden days when people were uh, putting you know, satellites and spacecraft up, uh, like the Hubble or the International Space Station, what they would do is they would build a model in the lab. So they want to know if this thing is going to have any vibrational modes that are going to tear it apart in space. So they'll build one in lab. They'll basically whack it with a mallet, a rubber mallet. So they'll get this impulse response and they'll see the waves going through it. And then they'll try to use that data to back out things like the stability properties, the eigenvalues, the frequency response. So if you have lots of data, you might start from this time domain and then build out these other models. And then the reason we're talking about transfer functions over the next few videos is because the transfer function perspective is actually going to help us uh, really understand this balance between robustness and performance. So we're going to be able to get a very good idea of what robustness means by looking at the transfer function, by looking at this complex valued uh, transfer function g of s of my system. Okay, So that's where we're going. We're going to understand what this transfer function is, and then we're going to use it to assess the robustness uh, of our system with, with closed loop control. Okay, thank you.